relationship concepts getting in the way of real relationship? In this webinar, we're going to explore how we carry a lot of ideas, definitions, and concepts around relationships of every kind, from partner to a friend, co-worker, parent, child, employer. These personal truths can get in the way of creating and experiencing real relationship. In this conversation, we'll look at this topic from all sides. I hope you enjoy it. So this conversation is about relationships. I thought it was really handy to have it around Valentine's Day. It wasn't by plan, I can assure you, but it showed up just um, as a really interesting topic because it's, and the topic is, are your relationship concepts getting in the way of real relationship? And, you know, I can, <laughs> I draw these things from my own personal life and then I see it's, it's not so uncommon. And what I, I notice is that we, we all carry very personal definitions of relationship, very personal definitions. And we have you know, definitions for every type of relationship, what an employer is, what a partner is, what a friend is, what a, a um, parent is, what a child is, how you show up in the world. I mean, all of these things, we have these very invisible definitions and concepts that we live in that we don't see that they're completely individual definitions and then we get you know connect with someone on whatever type of relationship and we feel like relationship definitions are universal well and then we think everybody should know what a good relationship is what a good friend is how a good friend shows up how a good partner shows up, how an employer is supposed to behave, you know? And I don't think we really step back and realize it's like, okay, where did, A, these definitions are mine and only mine. They're very, very personal to me. And then I think we need to just kind of glance back and see that how we got these definitions. Innocently enough, we got them through what we lived in, in our family of origin, what we made up about relationships, what we movies we watched as a kid, you know? I mean, we had some really poor examples of relationships if you want to go back to some of the movies we were seeing or even some of the songs we, you know, we sang unconsciously through junior high and high school, some of the songs we sang unconsciously about romantic relationships are barbaric when you break them down and listen to the words. It's like, that could not be farther from the truth of who, what kind of relationship I would want and what kind of disempowered position I would want to take in relationship. <laughs> it's just, it's so funny. But all of that has kind of gotten downloaded into our conditioned mind. Just downloaded innocently. And when then we think everybody else should know what our definition of relationship is. And then we enter into relationship. And when people don't meet our expectations or our definitions, it creates a great amount of suffering and discord. And I don't know about you guys, but you know, it always uh, inspired me to go in the opposite direction. I would look for the exit sign the moment challenge showed up. <laughs> it would definitely be, oh, this is not for me. No way, uh-uh, uh-uh, we're incompatible. But it's like, well, wait a minute. It's like, where did the the notion of compatibility, magic compatibility come from. Magic compatibility. It's like, wait a minute. 
we can wake up to the idea that we've got two very separate, or if it's in a work environment, you know, you, you basically have a family structure in a work environment. You have a family structure in your personal life environment. And every person in that grouping has their own definitions and silent expectations of how people act in relationship to them. So these are these invisible relationship concepts that we think are universal and we don't have curiosity around someone, how someone else sees it. We just assume they're wrong. We are just assume they're flawed or we just assume we're flawed, you know, that there's something wrong with us because these, this magic compatibility is not happening. And, you know, the doves are not flying out of the top of our head, you know, or whatever, <laughs> whatever these romantic versions are that we've gotten about, um, two separate realities connecting somewhere. Two completely different worlds finding a place to connect or find commonality. And so hopefully when you look at it that way, at least when I see it that way, about two or eight, depending on if you're in the work environment, however many you might have on your team, how many you might have in your family, that you have these separate realities coming together. And now I kind of find it more fascinating that people can even find a place to connect because we're so loaded down with what we believe to be true about connecting with another human being. So we connect with another human being and then we drag in all of this expectation all of this hidden agenda, all this hidden definition, and we overlay it on two separate realities. And then, you know, determine it's a good fit or it's not a good fit. Just from a very surface, surface uh, collision of two realities, okay? So like when you even think about in your own experience of life and you look around at all the ways you got your definitions of friend, parent, daughter, son, child, whatever, employer, supervisor, colleague, whatever, all those kind of definitions. And especially in uh, emotional emotionally based relationships, if you look around and see where you got your information on those, you might consider that, um, you know, you just might consider there could be a more authentic version of relationship than what we absorbed in our journey of life, you know, from ad campaigns from the households we were you know we were raised under and I'm not throwing anybody's household under the under the bus I'm just saying that of all the models that we had um, and maybe even now in in the, the time that we live now it's an opportunity to have more conscious relationship more relationships where people are awake and curious about each other versus trying to um, get their perfect definition fulfilled. Does that make sense? Just the, the way that we, even in like thinking about selecting a mate or a partner, it's like we go on these big hunts to try to find someone to fulfill our definition. And it's like, well, hmm, 
That seems so obvious to me now that it's like, well, wait a minute. It's not about the other person at all. It's about, I'm just on the hunt to get one that fits the way I want it to fit. Too bad what they want. <laughs> you know I mean? It just kind of seems kind of, kind of ludicrous, you know? So, so, um, If you think about just and just kind of playing with it, like, okay, I'm out on the hunt to fulfill my definition of a, of a good partner. <clears throat> One second. That you can see or play with the idea of where the conflict comes. You know, I know, I know in my relationship, I've had 40 years of practice in this particular relationship and it occurred to me how early on in this relationship, I thought, I really thought um, married people were together all the time because my parents were always together all the time. And I was, I just thought that's how it went. And it was like, well, the reality was that, that that wasn't at all what I wanted. I had too many things I wanted to do and explore on my own. And so does he. And so did he that I, I certainly felt maybe there was something wrong with me because that didn't look like fun at all being attached at the hip. Some people like it and it's great. But I thought there was a problem in the relationship and it needed to end because it it wasn't modeling after that definition that I had lived in. You know, and I always laugh that joke about, you know, how do you stay married for 40 years? It's like, well, nobody wants the divorce at the same time. I always loved that definition. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. <laughs> so, um, uh, but I, I saw that. I just kept, and, and he would too. He definitely, you know, he definitely hoped he'd have a pie bacon woman like his mama and be happy to see him, you know, his every need. He's like, well, that, that dog didn't hunt. That wasn't. That wasn't me either. <laughs> so anyway, but that if we don't allow all of our personal definitions to block our curiosity about the other person, to really be curious about who is this other person and, and do I want to know more about them and do they want to know more about me? That's a place where you could have real relationship and also grow a relationship from that and let all those ideas and concepts about what a good relationship is be put on the shelf and and connect with another human being without having to match fill all those definitions with one human being so I just, I'm just kind of throwing that out there. I've got <clears throat> more we can talk about, but I'd love to hear what you guys are hearing on that that idea or just what, what I've offered so far. If anybody would like to share. Great. Go right ahead. You can just speak freely. Can't hear you. I forget that. Great. Okay. Hi, Sherry. Hello. <laughs> So I, um, I'm going to be 75 in a couple of weeks and I'm going to give up searching for a definition of relationship and just kind of see what happens. And, and actually, um, ever since I was like out of high school, I knew the, the messages I was getting were not real or were not true or not what I wanted. But man, it's hard to uh, start from scratch and find your own definitions in the world from 1964 to 2021. Mm -hmm. So um, I wouldn't trade the the exploration, but it, it's not easy. Even having discarded the messages, it's like, well, what do you? What am I going to replace them with? And and now I'm just going to let it happen. I'm tired. Well, I think that that's, it's like, what if it could even be so, relationship could be so much easier if yeah. we, we, did, we realize all we have to do is be present to the other person and see what comes to life in the present moment. And, and I'm unattached, so that, that puts another 
element in there of uh, opportunity and challenge, I guess. Oh, I'll say opportunity and possibility because right. you know, we live in, in limitless potential. We're pure potential all the time. I don't know. The 70-year-old the pool is not, uh, not too great. <laughs> well, uh, you could clean those lenses right up, you know. <laughs> I, I have a friend that just got engaged, got engaged uh, uh, for the very first time at 60, you know. Yep. And, and um, to a much, much, you know, much younger guy, and they, they couldn't be happier. So I think I just love it as her being a, a pure potential, pure potential. We don't know. See, so we don't have to live under our assumed definitions of what our future looks like. What if right. we let all that go? Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Hey, Sherry. Hey, guys. Oh, um, God. I'll try not to say too much about this topic, but it's, I've been single for a decade and, um, you know, I, I got all the messages. I, you know, like I was raised, like me and my sister watched Cinderella with Leslie Ann Warren in the sixties and we cried. And I think that was our model, you know, or we come from divorce, early divorce from our parents. And then a stepfather that raised us. But um, like I always was in relationships out of neediness. Oh. And now that I've been single for a decade, I mean, I think I've kind of, I, I think that being single is just as wonderful or better for me than being partnered. I've gotten to know myself and developed a relationship with myself and actually been able to fall in love with myself. Mm -hmm. And I think I am so much happier mm -hmm. since I've been single. And I think it's just the in incessant messaging. Like I get all this stuff like, oh, senior dating. And, and I look at these guys, I'm like, I don't want to date these old farts, you know? Like, like I don't want anything to do that. Like. And menopause made me not made the thing go away that drove me into relationships and um like when i think about dating or going meeting somebody for coffee every time every time i do that i'm miserable and, and i think about all the things that make me happy and like that is nowhere on the list like i have so many travel plans so many projects i want to do and and I do Byron Katie work every day. So, and I list, I would do this thing with her every day for an hour. And it's like, this relationship, this present moment with you is the rich, is the relationship I'm having. And it's beautiful. So what is that? I mean, I like that so much in that, how many suffering concepts do we have around partnering? You know, just from our own experiences, it's like, what if those could go to the side and we could be fresh in the moment? I, I was lucky that I had a mother that started telling me very early, never get married, never have children. It's horrible. She told me that my whole life. Like I, like she told me that being married was sucked and it was obvious she hated it. And um, I'm living the dream, you know, like, to me, like, I feel like I have this dirty little secret, you know, like being single is awesome. Sometimes it's lonely, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but, um, but, but see, I love that because it's, 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 if we can free ourselves of so much of what we picked up along the way, we don't even know what's there to be experienced. You know, if we, if we just, continue to live under all of these concepts and ideas that innocently people tell us these things thinking they're giving us a jump on life. You know what I mean? We're going to leapfrog ahead of some suffering if you do this, this, and this, but that was their path. Mm -hmm. You know, that was completely their path. And it's all well-meaning, but it's like, wait a minute. It gets so simple. It gets so darn simple. 
that all you have to do is see another human being as a human being and nothing else. You can connect with anybody if you just see them as another human being and nothing else. I liked what you said about work relationships because I, that sort of, I, re I read once that you can make, I'm sorry if I'm taking over, like you create your family of origin at work. And I've, and I've, ne I've had to really work, do a lot of work on my relationship with uh, authority figures, almost at a higher path, like, and just sort of use the same techniques with family of origin. And when I used to have relationships mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. work, because I'll, I'll create this dynamic where I'm a victim and blah, 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 and all this stuff. Right, right. So how does that sound? Or tell me how, where that lands with you guys about what if all there was to relationship was showing up and being present and curious to another human being. And then your own creative potential, your own innate well-being, your own, um, I'll say your deepest wisdom about life will give you words that you that are alive and real and fresh in that moment you know yes um, i've had an opportunity to uh, uh practice uh, relationship for a long time because uh, i it's easier to to stay in the relationship than it is to get out of it in my opinion and uh, so because I was in it, well, here's an opportunity. I might as well, you know, see if I can make the most of it, you know. And it's amazing to me that I still catch myself in uh, uh, having opinions about uh, about that, that get in the way, about my partner, that get in the way of, uh, of my being present. And, uh, but the idea of just being present is, uh, it, it is. I, it, it strikes me very well. It's, it, and it makes a, a difference in the, the quality of the relationship in that moment, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how it lands with me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love the fact that you see that it could be so much simpler. You know, so much simpler. I love the fact that you pointed that out. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, like I remember how um, um, the word evidently would light me up, you know, like, like my husband would say something like that, 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 well, evidently, well, you know, it's like, evidently is just a neutral word. It doesn't mean anything. But in my solar system, I don't know why it was such a, a tone of condescending idiot shipness or whatever I made up about it. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's like, wow, you know, in the present moment, it's just like, if I really am present and clean in the moment, evidently it's just a word in the dictionary, <laughs> you know? But when I bring Sherry Lynn into it, it's like, you, 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 you dumb ate, you know? But that's just what I make up here. So, so that place about, gosh, we could clean up our act, you know, like clean up our act in, in, in just not becoming more aware of how our, our conditioned mind can contaminate pure possibility and potential between two people. Whether, you know, you make up that, well, I've never had good relationships, so I'm just destined not to have good relationships or nobody, you know, what, I don't, you know, you can see the limitless nature of junk that gets made up between two people. But it's all, always just two human beings finding a place to connect. No one has more power over you, nobody, you know, whatever, whatever. Anything else that anybody has on their mind about that?
even like I'll even say like em employers, you know, we believe that there's a, uh, gosh, it not even just employers or our siblings are, you know, we really believe there's a code of conduct or a code of um, just how they're supposed to show up in the world per my definition. And we can be completely blinded and asleep to our definition. And we think it's uh, it's a land of shoulds, but that they're all related to our personal reality and our personal definition. They, the other person has never been exposed to our life experiences. So how could they possibly know where you are coming from, from what your eyes are seeing about that other person, you know, about the role that other person would play? It just doesn't have to be that hard. But what can get challenging is staying in the present moment. Because in the, in the present moment, in the present moment is where the good feeling that you want from relationship exists. There's nowhere else that good feeling being in contact with another human being exists. Even if you're by yourself. Even if you're by yourself. There can be... Everybody out of everybody's probably had those low moments where the most torturous relationship you're in is the one with yourself. It's like mm -mm, we can clean that up too. You are you are good. You're a whole. You're complete. You're not broken. There's not a reason why you uh, find yourself in the circumstances you find yourself. It's like just. Be present to, to what's on offer today. And let all the stories go. We live in so much story. And it's all story. So much of a story if it's not happening right here between two people or between you and you, between you and you. But it can get, like I said, oh, yes, go ahead, Lisa. Oh, you're muted. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I haven't had much luck in relationships, <laughs> essentially, but, um, but I think it's because it's been confusing um, what, you know, and uh, I think that now, because I have been single for quite a while too, um, you know, I'm realizing I know myself better now. And I feel like, um, you know, that my freedom to be who I am and to allow another person to be who they are is like kind of important. <laughs> and um and, you know, it's, but it's so easy to get in the quagmire in a relationship of having your, you know, so-called buttons pushed and, you know, and all the whatever insecurities and expectations and judgments and, oh my word, you know, flood in. And, um, and I'm really aware of that kind of stuff more so. So it's not overcoming me um you know and it's um allowing me to just feel um that I can I can be who I am and and that that person can be who they are and what their needs are might be way different than anything that I ever saw in my own family um and anything that I've tried to fit myself into has been like a role that I felt trapped in. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that role that I felt trapped in or that perception that the other person had of me, that they wanted me to keep that, you know, role made me feel trapped as well. And so that was when I, you know, back out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah. I don't... And we can't sustain those roles. You know what I mean? We can't sustain, <clears throat> are, are there an energy drain to us? I used to, I used to do have that feeling like when I did work in corporate America and it was like, you know, you put on your costume and you check your authentic self at the door, go in and do what you get the check for. You come back, just about to leave the glass tower, you know, check back into your body of who you are and go try to squeeze a life into the what three hours you have conscious and awake for the rest of the day. And then you're depleted. But it's like, that's not even necessary. Because <clears throat> if it's not a if it's not a fit and you don't want to be there, just change jobs. Find something that that works for you. But you know, that was my own conceptual idea that I there was not space for me to be me in the corporate environment. You know, you put on your little good girl skirt and stuff at the time. <laughs> Go in there and, and do it. But oh, I, w- I would never do that now because I know that, and it's with the executives I work with as well. It's like, if they don't bring all of themselves to their job, their gifts can't be shared. Not successfully, their gifts just can't be shared. And they get depleted and drained and stressed out because they have an idea of their own personal definition of what an employee is and how they behave. You know, luckily big corporations have HR, so, you know, they can worry about how you uh, behave in the workplace, but otherwise be you. Connect with every single person as if they were another human being. I love that idea. I don't care if it's the chairman of the board or the, um, you know, the parking ticket person, forget their title and just connect with them as a human being. And then that's where, uh, what I'm talking about is where real relationship happens between two people. What happens when that happens is that it just gets, your life starts to feel very full from the inside versus empty or parched are needing to get the heck out. Yes, ma'am. You're muted, yes. Mm-hmm. There you go. I was just making sure you were talking to me. Um, yeah, something that came to mind with this, um, you know, I've had lots of practice with relationships because I've had 6,500 children. And, uh, you know, it's easy um, to let them be who they are and to, uh, you know, to see them as individuals and what they have to offer and all this. Um, Okay, with that being said, though, the one thing that I find that's interesting where, you know, like, um, and this has nothing to do with the 6,500 children, but, you know, when you become attracted to someone and it's not reciprocated, you know, and then you want to go there to the space where (laughs) what's wrong with me, and that's what I've learned, you know, is there's nothing wrong, you know, with, with me. The, you know, I'm perfect just the way that I am. It's just that, you know, I may not be their cup of tea. And that's the way I look at it not now is, you know, and the same thing if somebody is attracted to me and I'm not, it's just, you know, not, you know, my cup of tea instead of that. That's one thing that I've been working on is just not making myself wrong or like there's something wrong with me just because it's not reciprocated yeah that's been a tough one yeah that see see how fruitful dropping that story that there's something wrong with me what that the impact that can make on your life one little bitty story that's a tiny story but how huge of an impact that makes in living from a, a freer more grounded space and it's not all, you know, it's not easy to always take the personal out of it. But what you're noticing is, is that we, we do, every human being has the potential to see something fresh that they've looked at the same old way. And what you just explained is a, a great example of that. You're seeing it in a fresh way and how liberating and free is that for you? 
And so what if you see it and forget? It'll come back, you know? <laughs> Sometimes we get these great insights and then they don't stick. It's like, that's just part of being human too, you know? Don't make a story about that. Oh my God, uh, 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 you know? What's wrong with me that I saw something that I don't know? It's like, we just get another chance to a do over, but again, stay out of the story of meaning and how it's tethered to you. Just keep cutting those, those strings of what's tethered to you. Anybody else have anything on that? Isn't it interesting? I think it'd be interesting to even have like a week exercise of just really being curious about the other people you come in contact with. Not to have an expectation on them, but to just be curious about them. I think that gives an opportunity for real connection, cleaner connection, you know, like the concepts are and the definitions. And even, I even think that piece about um, this is, it looks like a concept to me. It's like that concept of like two people are interested in each other. And then how often has what will people think come between you and connecting with another human being? What would people think? What would people think just in how, how you present yourself to the world? Whatever reason, you know, just whatever seems to rub against your reality and their reality or what something shows up that isn't a match to your reality. And then you default to like, oh, my God, what would people think? It's like then that causes disconnection. You want to distance, you want to take off, you want to do something different because it's, we're sitting there really over-concerned about a nothing, a concept. What would people think? That's just a concept. Connect to the person, not more to the person than the concept. You're muted. Go ahead. Yeah, great. Yeah. Um, yeah. As I've been listening, I realized that um, a lot, depending on my feelings or, or like when I'm with another person, do I want something or am I scared? And then I hear and see that person through this filter that that's like the filter of what I expect or what I don't want or what I so I can't really hear or see who they really are because I have these you know glasses on of of expectations or fears or um yeah all our bells or whistles are going off you know what I mean all our yeah. insecurities around relationship are going off and we're trying to navigate all of our insecurities and we're throwing them up on people you know what I mean <laughs> we throw up on people when we're just trying to to get through all these insecurities and it's like wow we can wake up to that's all I'm connecting to is my insecurities are where I feel destabilized around another person but that's it's completely independent of the other person it looks tied to the other person because, you know, they're on the other side of our concepts about relationship, <laughs> but it's not the other person. <laughs> and, and if it's somebody you're, you're connecting with, of course, all your insecurities on that are going to show up. But those are innocently, that's all kind of invisible to us until we see it, what's happening. It's so innocent. It's so innocent. But to me, that's one of the great fun things about life is where we get a lifetime to continue to wake up in ways we didn't even, you know, un didn't even know we were operating under this stuff. We didn't even know. No harm, no foul. 
doesn't mean anything about us. It just means we're human and we continually get an opportunity to wake up to stuff. Yes. Just real quick. Um, yeah, I just recently noticed in myself that um, that I felt like I was um, had, a, you know, a connection and that um, but I for a long time and and my head has been telling me things until so my mind has been telling me, mm, you know, for this and this reason, it's not the right fit, like, or whatever in my head. But then I suddenly realized that there had been this feeling going on all along that I had been ignoring because I let my head get completely in the way, you know, of that. Yeah. So it's just a matter of opening myself up, you know, um, and and just getting rid of walls and defenses um, to see, you know, who knows? Who knows if I don't take a little step? I don't know, you know? Um, if my mind is in the way and is building a wall, I'm never going to know, you know? No, no. Yeah. And if we let our mind call the shots, you know, I don't know if y'all do this with food, but you know, I'll have sugar cravings and then I'll have salt cravings, you know? So I, I can't let my mind call the shots because it's not consistent. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it, it can uh, be so fickle that it can run me all over the place. And so I don't want to follow my mind. It's, it's not a stable, it's not a stable source to rely on but you do have a greater depth underneath all that. Underneath our, our personality level wisdom, we have a much greater resource of wisdom underneath that. And I think too, like we have such expectations that we expect people that we come in contact with to A, fulfill our definition and B, make our experience better. That's not their job. <laughs> you know, they've got their own life to live, you know, but <clears throat> wherever you can connect is a great, is a great overlap. But they don't need to take me on as a project and I don't need to take them on as a project either. If, if we really see that nobody's broken, nobody needs to be fixed. They don't need to fix me. They don't need to. Two freestanding people that have a desire to connect and have a good time in life. That to me sounds like a like real relationship when people come together on any level. There's not that that notion of need is that notion of need is a concept that's not between you and another person. The sticky need, you know. Yes. Well, when you're talking about that, what talking about that too, uh, I was thinking of all the relationships I have that are not romantic that I have that in. Like I have friends that I get together with now and then, and uh, for walks or meals or whatever, and. I just think there's just too much emphasis on like the romantic relationship being something we're supposed to want and supposed to have. And um, like, I'll go on a date like once a year, like I'll just pr for practice, you know, to see where my head is at, I'll look online and I'll go meet someone for coffee. I always regret it, but um, it's like too, you know, it's like the, the hours I spent, but what I l learn about my, I get to see like in slow motion how like immediately if I'm even slightly attracted to this person, I abandon, I abandon myself. Like I just, it's so subtle, but I see that I do it right away. And when I did it written inventory of all my past relationships, I always just, because they wanted me, I got in the relationship and I never took the time to think about how I really felt about them. Mm. Mm. 
And it was a good friend of mine who's, who told me, she goes, you're, it always seems like you're trying to force yourself to like somebody. And that was such good information for me. Mm-hmm. Well, to your point, that is like <clears throat> somehow in our, in our messaging through our life, there's this should, you know, you should be partnered, you know, are you, you know, I certainly had that with like kids. Well, you should want kids. It's like, well, but I don't, you know, <laughs> but you should, there's something wrong with you. Like, no, I just don't. So, you know, but that's that, that, that way that those definitions were, we assumed that were ours to be fulfilled or to find somebody on the planet that will fulfill our definitions. We just get a chance, like I said, to wake up to that and go, no harm, no foul, not my definition. Yeah. Anybody else have anything else you'd like to share about real I'll say real relationship. I just love it. R-E-A-L in all caps. Cause I think going into this uh, Hallmark holiday of Valentine's, you know, <laughs> how many definitions of what Valentine's is all about. <laughs> I think it's like, no, back up and redefine A, if you want to play Valentine's day and B, if you do make sure you do it your way per your definition. Nobody else's. If that's, if that's what you want to play with and express yourself and do it your way. I think it's a great idea to, to, if, you know, if it resonates with you to just do kind acts for people or do something loving for someone or, you know, just if that's, but do it on, you know, Tuesday, the 17th too, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just what live in integrity with how you want to live per your definition would be what I'm saying. So anybody else have anything you want to share? Because uh, it's open if you do. we got a couple of minutes. Well, I, here's my message. I think it's a fabulous time to go out and love and be loved. Just go love and be loved and let all the definitions go away. And a great way to love and be loved is to just be present and be curious about the person and gosh, nobody, nobody needs to fix you or fulfill you or meet your definition nor you meet theirs, but you can certainly have great connections with Thank you for listening to this conversation on relationships and relationship concepts. My name is Sherry Ray. I am a consultant and coach, and I teach people how to eliminate struggle in their life. And we all know relationships of all time can be a great source of struggle. I'd love to help you with yours. You can reach me on my website at sherryray.com. Thank you for listening.